In this video, I'm going to show you my third full example plugin from my personal vault. And since you've purchased this class, it's now all yours. Go ahead and use, adapt and modify it to your liking. In a nutshell, what this plugin does is to create sequences that will apply your presets to a different group of fixtures. And what's cool about this plugin is that it labels the sequence that uh, in a way that it has your group's name so you can always know which fixtures are affected by a sequence and the cues will have the names of the presets. So let me show you what the end results looks like and then I'm going to walk you through the code step by step. And as always, let's copy and paste the code over to the console and then run it. So I'm in here in the example plugin number three and then let me just insert this code right here presets to sequence and I'm going to hit save now the first thing that we need are a few presets again the idea is that you have presets and sometimes it's a little hard to kind of assign them or or apply them to your fixtures unless you want to use a live programmer which can get a little messy after a while in my experience at least so that's not really my style so let's just create a window I'm, I'm trying to think maybe we can reuse this window okie doke so I'm just going to open up the pools presets correct now I'm going to store this in here perfect now let me just take this group and let me rename that all right let me actually just select a different kind of group here. I'm just going to essentially pick the odd dimmers. So I'm just going to go odd in here. And this is just to show you that or, or kind of show you why this plugin is so useful. All right, let's go ahead and Let's see, I'm going to just create three different presets, which also don't make all that much sense, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So one at 30%, one at 60, and then one at full. Alrighty. Now what this plugin does in a second is it takes a group and then a preset range and in this case we are going to take this odd group and then this preset range up here and this will be assigned to a sequence uh, let me see so I'm just going to use this one down here so 1.201 and with that I think we're set let me just run this so first it asked me the preset type by the way awesome welcome screen huh so the preset type in this case is dimmer one preset start is at one we want to take the first dimmer preset and then the last is the third preset in the dimmer pool and then lastly we want to take the second group all right let me restart that plugin because it didn't like me changing focus so one one three preset n and then group number two Fade, um, that's a good question. I think in this case zero for demonstration purposes and then 1.201. All right, and here we go. Now let's check this puppy out. I'm going to clear the programmer. And now we can see 30%, 60%, and then uh, this should be full. I can't really see it here, 100%, perfect. And what you can also see is the sequence number is odd. So we know exactly that we are actually manipulating this group over here. And we can also see it shows us all these values. So that makes it really easy to, for example, with the X buttons, actually set your different values. And uh, let me just show you what that looks like for when we actually insert a fade value. So again, presets two sequence uh let's see uh dimmer preset end three and then group two fade 
yeah let me just go with the five second fade and then 1.201 by the way notice that in this case all the work was done by my right hand on the numpad and that's really the best way ideally your plugins can only be controlled with numbers because that makes them really fast now let's check out if this actually worked and now we can see that it fades in to these individual cues I can't really see any fading up here so I'm not really sure what's going on here but you know what at this point I don't care also you're far along enough in this course to fix that yourself all right let's go through the plugin and as always let's check out the main function so the function that is being returned this is called main in that case and this is what you want a main function to look like ideally it's just a bunch of variable assignments and then calling a function or functions with those values and that's really all you need so first we're going to print the welcome screen i don't i don't think that's going to need any explanation we're getting a preset range group number fade time and the target executor and then we are plugging all of that into the create sequence from presets and the code itself is actually not that complicated but again i don't think that the true power of plugins lies in complicated code per se but rather in the way that they can automate your already existing workflows so let me just go through the functions here real quick that actually get all of the data from the user uh, we saw this exact pattern before i wonder why perhaps i actually took that and put it into another example to reuse it that's right um, and then essentially up here we only have the print function and then the print welcome screen all right that looks good now one thing that i'm noticing here immediately which i just showed you differently in a previous video called um, one function to get all user inputs you can already tell that this has been a while since i built this plugin because essentially all of this stuff, I could have gotten all of that um, sort of from the user in one function. The problem with that probably would have been that the function would have been named something like get user infos or get user input. And while that is fine, this version is sort of telling me a bit better uh, what's going on here. So kind of use your own judgment there. And that's essentially it, I guess. The only other two functions that we have here is the get object label. And all of that is essentially, this stuff right here is actually um, also part of the example plugin from MA2. Um, if you can't find it, just copy paste this function over to wherever you actually need uh, to get a label for something. I made sure to also do a set object label like that. These two make a nice pair. And I mean, that's just a label command, nothing, nothing major. All right, let's take a look at the create sequence from presets. All we do here is, first of all, assemble a bunch of object names. And I think that's also a good idea to group that. And essentially it's the group name that we get from the group number that we just get as like a number in here. And then we get also get the label and then the executor name, we also write it out. And Again, this is similar to functions. So whenever you use a certain value more than twice, let's say you use a certain value two or three times, it's probably a good idea to put it into a variable because then you can only mistype it once. <laughs> and once you have a spelling error in there, you only have to change it in that one area. And that really reduces the chance of having errors down the road. So really make sure to use variables like that. Whenever you use a specific value more than twice, do it and put it in the variable. I would even go further. If you use a value more than twice, put it in a variable first. All right, this is interesting. This is something that if you plan to use this, um, this macro, you might want to change this around if you use this plugin, of course, because at the end of the day, this deletes an executor. I'm not sure if that's maybe the, the kind of behavior you're, you want to have. But then all we do is essentially go through this range of presets. We have a queue index, so we want to start with the first queue, obviously, in the sequence that we're creating. 
And you can also see here inside of the, the loop even, I first of all make sure that I set these variables because as you can see, I use them in quite a few places. And so again, if I define them up front because I do use the same value in multiple places, there's only one place for me to mess up the, the spelling and maybe to forget to add these little white spaces so that the command actually works. And then all we do here again is clear all and then we take the group and essentially make sure that we put the presets into that into that um, into the programmer for that group then we store that in the executor in the queue name and the queue name by the way is just the queue index which we are getting from this loop and then combined with the keyword queue so this is really nice to read and then what we also do is essentially assign this label and this is really where you need to know what queue you're working on so if we didn't want to label them we could also just go store 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 but the important part here is that we want to know what queue kind of applies which preset and that's why it's really important that we keep the queue index up here so that we actually know what queue to label and then most importantly we count them up and then this is interesting um, we actually right so since we kind of create the the executor in this loop we wait until after the loop to actually label this executor using the group label and that's essentially it to summarize this is not black magic this is not something you couldn't also do by hand but it just wouldn't take a lot longer and in this very specific case we are using the power of lua to get a label <laughs> that's not that complicated and that's probably also not one of the benefits that you expected when you looked at lua right you probably imagine some crazy new worlds uh, where you can completely make the grand ma2 console um, i don't know make sandwiches and uh, cure cancer but in this case actually what it does in this case is just be able to read out the label of something and use that in a smart way. So it's really not that much of black magic here. It's just really simple, straightforward features that do save you a lot of time. Just imagine how much time it would take to always take your presets, take your groups, store that in the sequences and label it correctly, just so that during the live show, you don't get confused. And yeah, I think this is one of the best examples for showing you the power of plugins. At the end of the day, it does save a lot of time, but it's not that crazy when it comes to the kind of functionality that you're using. All right, but that's it for my example preset to sequence plugin. Again, feel free to take it, make it yours, modify it, adapt it, um, use it in a completely new way. You purchased this course, and so this plugin is also yours to use and mess around with.